their access to electrical, electro, uh, uh, electronic devices and electronic centers. They don't have to have it in their homes. They don't have to have it in their schools all the time. But they will have to have it in the locality they live in. And that's why there, there are 4,500 centers being launched next month. Already some have started oper operating. A few thousand more will be launched next month. And this is the, the picture that you see in Bangladesh. I mean, for years and years, decades, centuries perhaps, I've seen people going from office to office. And we're trying to change that paradigm. I mean, uh, we launched one, uh, what we're calling the one-stop service center in one DC office last month. And this will be extended to all 64 district offices by next month, which will be connected to the 4,500 uh, centers in the village level. So basically, what will happen is a person will get access to permits, access to birth registration information, access to driving license, passports, whatever they need from one place, and that will be in their village. So that transformation will take a little bit of time, but we're working towards that. The infrastructure is being set up. The next area of digital Bangladesh for the common man is something I call thinking out of the computer box. Whenever we think about digital Bangladesh, we think about the computers, we think about the internet, we think about the wireless and the wired form of internet. But we have seen in countless ways that mobile phones, radio, television, these are becoming the vehicles through which services are being delivered to the common man. And there are examples here that you see. There is a doctor sitting on one end of a TV camera where the patient is in another end. So the doctor is actually remotely consulting with the patient and providing prescriptions. And the, the test results are being emailed to the doctor. The next one uh, is a radio being used in a school to guide the teacher in a primary school. The one on top, you will see that uh, battery operated TV and uh, VCD players are being used in a classroom. And the last one, we have, uh, I said, 50 million mobile phones in the country, and about 15 or so million of them have mobile phone camera. And that camera is being used for agricultural purposes. So basically, you take the picture of a, of a, of a pest and send it to the, and this is a new system that uh, we're just launching uh, in a few months. Uh, we've seen that in, in other countries. So you take the picture of the pest and send it to the uh, agriculture office and get some results that this is, this is what they need to do. So these are some revolutionary changes that are happening for the common man. There are a few other examples in the interest of time I'll actually uh, speed up, but I want to mention maybe one or two here. The second one is computerized land, land management. I mean, many of you sitting here probably own land in Bangladesh or have purchased land recently. Uh, land litigation is the largest source of corruption in Bangladesh. 80% uh, of the litigation civil, civil suits are actually related to land. And uh, uh, the resolution of many of these suits take probably 10 years, 20 years sometimes. So that process has started. There are 10 companies that have banded together uh, from the private sector working with the government uh, to digitize, start the process of digitization of land records. So this, is, this will be another revolution in Bangladesh. And as you're thinking about what projects to invest in, what projects to get involved, this is potentially an area. This will, this will be a few billion dollar projects possibly over the next 10 years, 15 years. Uh, from the Prime Minister's office, we're doing a lot of coordination. I think at this point of the digital Bangladesh journey, that is, that is highly needed. Uh, we have a very senior level bureaucrat in every ministry. We call them the governance focal points. They do coordination at the ministry level and uh, all the directorates under the ministry and they liaise with us. Uh, so the Prime Minister's Office Finance Division Planning Commission, they all orchestrate this massive, uh, massive uh, e-governance movement in Bangladesh. And the access to information program that I manage, that actually facilitates, acts as a catalytic role to facilitate the entire government and private sector partnership process. Uh, so in this partnership, I think what we want to see is the NRB is joining hands. Right? We have established a partnership between the government and the private sector and I think it is unprecedented. What I have seen in the last couple of years has been unprecedented, the joining of hands. And the NRBs must participate in that, in that process. Some opportunities for NRBs, some of this was discussed, but I'll just do a quick list. 
Uh, software is something that we talk about all the time uh, for the international market, but there is a growing market for software, especially in the areas of e-governance, land digitization, uh, healthcare, much opportunities, many opportunities are existing, uh, emerging, where the NRBs can actually participate. Uh, IT enabled services. This is one area that is sorely lacking, and BASIS is partnering with other association, industry association, to develop the industry, the IT enabled service industry. This is call centers, business process, outsourcing, insurance processing, medical imaging. So a lot of, lot of different areas are emerging right now, and other countries are taking advantage of that. I think we need to focus on this. This will create a little higher degree of employment in the software industry also. Mobile content is a big area, power, tourism, healthcare, infrastructure, and stock markets. Uh, listen to the story of how we have a very buoyant stock market that has uh, done very well compared to many other countries, and that's an area where we can invest as well. Now, what are the expertise that we need from the NRBs? And again, this is a very quick list. Somebody, I think, asked a question in the morning that what about project management? Yes, what about project management? I think that's an area where we can really help. Branding the country. Bangladesh Next is the slogan that we have come here with. This is the next IT destination for the world. So branding the country is an area you can help with. Marketing. Uh, entrepreneurial investment. These are things I've discussed already. Now, we're all familiar with the China One strategy. Vietnam became the next China, so to speak. So, the spillover effect of China went to Vietnam. Now, could we ask ourselves whether the spillover effect of India could come to Bangladesh? The, the details of that I think we will discuss later, but keep that image in mind. Now, at the end, what I would like to say is that the, the last H, the hands, already mentioned we need to join hands. So we think with our head, we feel with our heart, but we have to do with our hands. So unless we join hands, unless we actually engage in the process, I think it was Stephen Covey who said that uh, without involvement there is no commitment. So when, once we say that we are committed, I mean I, I see all of you and I have to believe that the commitment was created when you signed up for this summit. So we are not going to talk about whether we'll be committed towards the IT development of Bangladesh, toward building a digital Bangladesh for the common man and for ourselves as well. I think that question you already answered. Now I think we need to discuss how will we do it. And I think we had good starts, maybe some false starts. We saw the story of Tech Bangla. Tech Bangla started in, uh, in uh, 1998, did uh, a few large events in 2000 and started with a big promise. Uh, did not materialize. Silicon Bangla IT also had a big event. Uh, American Association of Engineers and Architects hosts events every year. Uh, recently I've seen another effort from the UK, the NRB Voice. So many events, many efforts are underway, but I think we need to consolidate that. We need to have a host. And my proposal would be that that mechanism, we think about a sustainable way to develop that mechanism. Um, and the proposal that I have is that such a mechanism actually happens in Bangladesh. Maybe the government, maybe the development partners uh, work with that. The industry obviously will be part of that. And it will be some kind of an NRB platform which will allow the committed and interested NRBs to engage in the process the process that we've already started, and then they have to build the nation and brand the nation as well. Um, and these are some of the features, development of a database, which we started in Tech Bangla, did not continue. Uh, proactively engage the NRBs for projects, investment, partnership, and knowledge transfer. A lot of knowledge you can transfer to the, to the people in Bangladesh. So these are things that this platform could potentially do. So my proposal is to start thinking about a platform of that nation. And the platform will also have to have very strong administrative capacity to streamline bureaucratic processes. A lot of you shy away from venturing in Bangladesh because I know there is a lot of red tape. You get stopped at different points, starting with the customs process, possibly. So these are the areas where this platform, this organization, this uh, entity, whatever it is, will be able to help. 
Now there is some data that I have that I thought was very interesting and I wanted to share that with you. Um, I've looked at the remittance figures and the remittance